Don, I know you know how this business is, but uh, I was in Casey Middlestad, you know how things like that happen, but uh, what were you thinking when that happened? Yeah, that was uh, obviously um, Casey, uh, you know, I spent a lot of time with Casey over the years, watched him evolve as a player and put the work in to get to the point that he's gotten. Um, and it was a tough day, uh, knowing that uh, we were we were uh, parting ways, and uh, obviously wish him the best. Um, he's done an amazing job. He's very dedicated, committed to the Sabers, um, and, and wish him well. Um, on the flip side, when I did make the call to, to Bo, um, it was uh, I thought you know anybody that gets traded, you know there, there's there's a, you wonder how it's going to affect them, and I was even. A, a little hesitant on the phone and wait to see and take a read from him and I could not believe how excited he was about uh, coming to our team. He knows lots of guys in the locker room, he's played with guys in the locker room, um, he spent time with them even uh, recently and um, was very, very excited uh, to join us and, and that, that obviously picked me up hearing that uh, and he's one heck of a player so it was a, it was a swap of, of two very, very accomplished young hockey players and young talent. And, uh, we're certainly happy to have him along. How much did that help by that? He's known Krebs and Cousins, I think, I think they said since 8, 9, 10 years old. Yeah, and add, add Quinn in there, and uh, he knows Bryson a bit, so um, it, it, it does. It helps. It helps the transition. And he, you know, he told me right away he was, he was very excited immediately on the phone. Lots of energy, lots of positive energy. Uh, you know, it picked me up, as, as you mentioned. It's it's tough to see Middlestead go. You don't know what you have coming the other direction. And I got off that phone call, and I was I was completely energized by him uh, and his enthusiasm to uh, be part of our organization. Casey had become an important leader in the room. Losing somebody like that on a game day, would you I guess sense from from the rest of the guys on how you know, how that kind of impacted them, or maybe changed the dynamic as you're just preparing to play a game? Yeah, I, I mean. It is. It was. It's an interesting position to be in because uh, you know he's loved in that locker room. Um, I do feel that when you're, you know, you know they know it's a business. They know it's time of the year. Our, our players and uh, but the familiarity, as as Paul mentioned, with uh, Bo uh, coming in. There's several guys in that locker room that can can. There's reason for them to get excited as well. Even though, and, and I think that uh, balanced it out. Um, it balanced out. Obviously, you have to play a game. These guys in this building and this rivalry is, you know, playing the, the Maple Leafs is, is something that we, they're, they're excited about. So I think that, uh, you know, that pulled them right into it, um, the combination of all that. Don Bowen's been uh, sick, the, sick this morning in the morning skate. Is he going to Buffalo? Or? Yeah, you know, when uh, Kevin, Kevin spoke to him, and, and, you know, the thought was because he's battling uh, an illness, sent him right to Buffalo. When I got off the phone, I texted Kevin and I said, I don't think he's going right to Buffalo. I think he's going to go right to Nashville. And about half an hour later, he called Kevin back and said, I want to go to Nashville. So um, obviously feeling better. The, the, the flu bug's been going around. If he's had the same thing our guys have had, it's it's uh, it's a fairly quick resolve at least. Uh, maybe. And, you know, that, that, that was that was another really good indicator. Uh, but when I hung up with him, I knew he was, I knew he was going to make that call back, and he did. From a coaching perspective, obviously you had a game in front of you today, but when you look at what Bo brings, where do you anticipate using him or having an immediate impact? Uh, you, you know, I don't think there's any better partner to have than and welcome to the organization than playing with Rasmus Dahlin, and I expect him to, to, to slide in there. Um, you know, tomorrow I, Rasmus is uh, he's a he's a leader, and, and um, that's 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 what I expect, and I expect that to be a smooth transition based on him knowing. Uh, the locker room fairly well, and um, you know guys are accommodating. So, is part of that because he played so well with McCarr? Uh, I mean, he's he's been paired with him and played pretty well with him. Yeah, I mean, I think that um, that's good to have had that and that experience. Uh, you know, he'll bring some he'll bring some experience here that I'm sure will help us. But but yes, it makes it easy. I mean, you know him as a player, as a talent. So um, you know, I think it's easy. Uh, you know to. to Dolls has done so much for this organization already, and I think he's the guy that will want to be part of uh, integrating the, ne you know, the next guy in the lineup. What do you 
Who wants to play both the left and the right side? Where do you, I, said, I know you said you were playing with Donnelly. Do you want him on the left or the right? Though? Yeah, I mean, I think everybody makes a, a big deal of left and right side, and, and it is if you can't play the right side and you're left-handed. <laughs> it's a big deal, <laughs> um, really big deal. But there's guys that can do it and guys that are pretty good and guys that like it, actually. You, you, you're in different postures, obviously, at the point offensively. You're on your one-time side all the time. Um, so it's, it's uh, and then when you're doing it over and over in drills and practice every day and you're on that offside, you get better with, at it and you get more comfortable at it. I think most of the problem, the challenge is guys are shifted to it and they haven't had time in practice. Uh, so, and, and most teams put righties and lefties together historically. So, but our guys have liked it. Um, I know that some of our lefties prefer it now uh, because they've had so many reps. So not an issue for us. Don Victor played tonight for the first time in a few weeks. I mean, he scored your only goal. Just, just what did you think of you know, him getting to score and just him getting to play? Yeah, I thought it was uh, it was nice to get him to, nice to get him in the lineup because he works hard. He is an absolute great uh, person uh, and a worker. And uh, and I talked to him before the game and I said, let's communicate and I don't want to put you in a bad spot. We'll see how you feel. And, and he looked at me with 100 percent confidence and said, I'm good to go. I'm ready. And, uh, and obviously he was. That was a very big role and very nice to see uh, him persevere and, uh, and, and cash in. Was it unfortunate because with Matthews you held him to almost nothing, if not nothing, in regulation time and he gets one chance in overtime that's in your net. Uh, that, I guess that's just the way, the kind of player he is. Yeah, he's an opportunist and, and um, obviously a nice, you know, he's, he plays with a playmaker that's uh, dangerous all the time and, and we let that slip away and back on it. From a team building standpoint, to have Bo on a blue line that's already, you know, so young, like what does it do? Do you think for the direction of this team to be able to build it from from the back front, you know, with, with all those young defensemen? Uh, for it, it, it's huge. I mean, uh, to add another defenseman uh, that caliber when you have you know Samuelson, Dalene, and Yokoharu emerging as we we're all watching Yokoharu emerge in the last month, really. And we put a lot of pressure on Yoko. Well, I have personally, um, to the point where I think there are times he thought I didn't even like him as a player. Um, <laughs> and I know that for, for a fact, but uh, but it's part of the process of getting these guys to become better at the AJR. And I think Yoko has done an amazing job this year and really in the last month of rising. So, um, you know, Oopi, it's helped Oopi, uh, UPL. And obviously we know we have Levi as a, as a you know, lot with lots of potential, but this is the way winning teams are built. Um, and, and you see us with a better focus defensively, even in this building tonight, limiting top players. Those are the areas that this franchise has needed to improve in. Uh, we've targeted, and uh, it's nice to see we're making improvements. It's also nice to see, I think uh, Kevin's been very pragmatic in, in making sure we had the right pieces at the right time um, in the right circumstance. And I think this is another one, a um, big piece of, of uh, you know, some pragmatic movement to, to, to make this. To keep this thing going in the direction that uh, it needs to be.